Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff, and it is time for the Galaxy Note 7 in-depth review. Actually, I'm filming right now on the Galaxy Note 7. This is the back camera filming in 60 frames per second, 1080p. So what I'm actually going to be doing with this video is that I will split it up into episodes. This is episode one. This is such a complicated phone that there are so many features, and that is why I really want to do this bit by bit. So this video is going to be about the build quality look and feel, some issues that have been talked about such as scratching, battery issues, also all the features with the S Pen, and then I will continue on in later episodes. So let's go ahead and check it out. So the first thing that I want to do in this review is to take a look around the phone. Let's talk about the look, the feel, the build quality. This is one gorgeous phone. So we've got this in four colors. You've got the black onyx, same as my Galaxy S7 Edge right here. You've got blue coral, titanium silver, and gold platinum. We are not going to be getting the gold one in the United States. I hold this thing in my hand and I'm just like, whoa, they did a pretty good job. Is it a practical job because this thing has glass on the front and the back? I don't quite know. That's going to be your opinion. But check this thing out. I'm trying so hard not to get any fingerprints on this because this is a fingerprint magnet. I think what makes this so appealing is that this is uniform on both sides this time. We have the Galaxy S7 Edge and the Galaxy S7 Edge looks quite similar to this, but this uniform body front and back does look quite stunning. You have this nice curve here and then the same curve for the display. Some people have been complaining that the ports along the bottom don't line up exactly, so you can't call this uniform. But whatever, that's something that has never bothered me. I also find this to be Samsung's most appealing edged phone ever, just because I find this curve to be less obtrusive than the ones before. So we have the Galaxy S7 Edge. This had a more subtle curve than from the Galaxy S6 Edge. And because of that, I'm finding that there's less image distortion as well. I know that a lot of people are angry that there's only an edge version of the Note because of this edge and it's hard for screen protectors, but also it causes that image distortion. But I'm telling you, this time around, it's really not bad. When the S6 Edge came out, I swore that I would never get an edged screen again, but I don't notice it here. I don't notice a terrible problem. So hopefully that can set some of your guys' minds at ease. Also, Samsung took very special care to make sure that the pen works all the way on that edge. You can see that there's no trouble of it being recognized there at all. And there's also palm rejection so that my palm won't interact with the screen. You can see that I can, can still touch to focus. Then I can go ahead and snap a picture. And all that works just fine, so that's nice. So let's take a look around the phone. I think that the buttons are in a nice place. That's always something to remark on. So starting on the left, you've got the volume buttons up and down. That is all that's on the left side. On the right side, you've got your power button. All these are nice, responsive, and clicky. On the top, we have our SIM tray. This is for a nano SIM. Also, you have the SD card slot in here as well. You've got a microphone here. You've got your antenna band lines, so you can get reception. On the bottom, more antenna band lines. You've got a standard headphone jack, USB-C charging port. You've got quick charge 2.0, another microphone and the speaker. And also you've got the S Pen. Looking around at the frame here, what really sticks out to me is that this is now black as opposed to the silver of before. I think that it meshes really well. So this is also a very nice touch around the band. Now looking at the front here, we have the LED indicator, which is actually quite hard to see from right here. And we've got the LED that's for the iris scanner. We've got the receiver, you've got a five megapixel front facing camera, then the dedicated camera right here that is for the iris scanner. And down here, we still have our two capacitive buttons, the recent key and the back key, and also our home button, which also acts as a fingerprint scanner working just as well as the Galaxy S7 Edge. We have a 5.7 inch Super AMOLED display, Quad HD, over 530 pixels per inch. So this looks really nice and crisp. This is Gorilla Glass 5, actually front and back are Gorilla Glass 5. I did ask about this. So migrating over to the back, the Gorilla Glass 5, we've also got inductive charging NFC, you've got a 12 megapixel back facing camera, 
We've got optical image stabilization here, and essentially the same camera as the Galaxy S7. We have our single LED flash and also the sensor for S Health. I've got some scratches here along the bottom. I don't know how they happened. They just look like little scuff marks. They're really hard to see unless you're in the exact right lighting, but you can see them there. I have no recollection of how those happened. Maybe it even came like that. But my front glass is still perfect, not a scratch on it. I know a lot of people have been really concerned that this scratches horrifically easily. And even my Galaxy S7 has a tiny scratch on it after several months of use. But just being careful to flick off any debris before I wipe it on my shirt has helped it. And I don't have any scratches just yet. Will it scratch eventually? Yeah, probably. Get a screen protector. But in terms of it scratching more easily than Gorilla Glass 4, it shouldn't, and here's why. Gorilla Glass 5 is most likely made from alkali alumina silicate. That's what Corning has been using for years. And alkali alumina silicate glass rates at about a 6 on most scale of mineral hardness. So think silicates, like feldspar, quartz. It doesn't matter about the strengthening process that's called tempering. That's the chemical strengthening process that they use. This glass is still going to scratch at about a 6. And as a side note, Corning says anyway that all glass scratches at about a 5 or a 6 on most scale of mineral hardness. So what this tempering process and this newer composition of their glass does is make it harder to introduce surface imperfections. And these surface imperfections are what causes the glass to crack. So deep scratches, for instance, it's harder to do that. They've managed to temper the glass even deeper than before. So they're saying now that this is able to withstand some drops onto some rough surfaces. Corning is claiming that this glass can survive a 1.6 meter drop from shoulder height onto a hard rough surface 80% of the time. And you shouldn't get those really deep surface flaws in it that's going to make the glass crack. So no, it should not be any less scratch resistant. But here's the clincher. Despite all the science here is that we all saw Zach's video, Jerry Rig Everything, and he had those little picks. They range from 0 to 10 on most scale of hardness, and once he got to 3, the glass scratched, or at least it seemed that way. So Corning is saying that their glass is not going to scratch at a three. So they came up with an explanation that the softer pick had actually rubbed off onto the harder glass and had left some residue. But to me, it looks like scratches. To everyone else, it looks like scratches. All you can do is use a microscope and check that for yourself. But if you do use a lot of force with something softer, you could conceivably scratch it. But if Samsung did something to the glass of their own spec, then it's going to knock down Corning's own specs. So that could conceivably compromise what Corning has said is the spec of their glass. What I think is that over time, we're really going to see the truth is going to come out. If you really are that nervous about your glass getting scratched, just put a skin on it, put a screen protector on the front, be done with it. I know it's been hard to find a good screen protector. The Samsung OEM one seemed to be the winner so I've been waiting to get my hands on one of those, but honestly, I probably won't use one. But for the back, I definitely insist on using a skin. This is where Dbrand has saved me here. Thank you, Dbrand, for sending some samples for me to look at. Because this is so smudgy fingerprinty, and I also want to protect my phone from scratches, I am really happy to put a skin on it. So I definitely have to give a shout out to Dbrand because it fits really, really well and also has a really nice look and feel to it. There's plenty of examples. You can check out their website. Thank you, Dbrand, for supporting my content. I'm very curious about your guys' experiences and if this scratched really quickly for you. Just let me know. What's also pretty cool about this phone is that it's IP68 certified, so you can put it down to 1.5 meters in water for a half hour and it should be able to survive. You can also use the S Pen underwater. I'm not exactly sure why you would want to do that, but at least being able to use the S Pen underwater will allow you to control the phone underwater. So if you're in the bath or if the display is really wet, you can still use the S Pen to interact with it and you shouldn't have problems. So that's something that people couldn't do with the S7 before. Your finger could not interact with the touch screen. So props to Samsung for that. That is a nice fix to a problem. I am sad to see, though, that these Edge phones still have a bit of a design flaw. This is something that's been going on since the first Edge version of the phone, the S6 Edge, is that along the side here, you've got some light reflection. Now, these displays do not have a backlight, so we're not seeing actual light leaking, 
But when you have a white image or any bright part of the image, you end up seeing the light reflect downward and it kind of comes out down at the bezel here. It's a light leaking type of appearance. It's a little bit bothersome to me, but it's something that's going to happen with every single one. So do not bother returning it if this is something you've noticed. I'm sure that if Samsung wanted to, they could go and paint the glass really well down here at the bottom so that the light doesn't reflect downward like that anymore. But they have not done that yet. Another thing that concerns me about this device is the whole recall situation because of the batteries blowing up. I need to make one thing clear though before discussing any of this. This device is not dangerous. Once Samsung starts shipping out new units, I really wouldn't worry. If you really like this device, don't let this whole situation keep you from buying this phone. Because what was essentially found by Samsung is that the batteries were defective, not the phone. They've outlined their whole recall program. If you purchased a phone, they want you to return it, and they outline through an email that they're sending everybody right now how to go through your carrier or how to go through them. But essentially, they had a lot of defective batteries, and it looks like they were sent out all over the world, and they were causing the phone to essentially explode. Not so nice, but that was when the phone was on the charger. It's not like the phone's just going to explode randomly in your hand or anything like that. But because of these defective batteries, and since this phone doesn't have a removable back cover, all of them have to be recalled, except for the ones in China because those did not receive the defective batteries. Also, I'm hearing that some T-Mobile phones were made in China, but still Samsung is recalling those as well. Basically, if you're afraid of your phone having any troubles, just go and exchange it. As for me, I'm really anal retentive about quality and I have a really nice display here, so I don't want to exchange this. My phone is not overheating. It's not showing any signs of anything weird. So I'm just going to be on standby. So this is a concern, but this is not a reason that I would not purchase this phone, you guys. So these are my thoughts on this. And as far as recall devices, devices get recalled all the time. Things happen, especially when you're manufacturing two million of these things, these things happen. I do give Samsung props for trying to deal with this quickly. It is unfortunate that Apple's device gets released really, really soon, but these are just my views on this issue. Moving on. So now let's move on to talking about what makes a Note device a Note, and that would be the S Pen. So let's go ahead and talk about all those features, especially the new ones. So last year there was a concern that you could put the S Pen in backwards and it would get stuck, but this year you can't do that. This tip is just wide enough to not be able to fit in there. So unless you're really going to shove it inward, I don't think you're getting this in there. I'm sure there are talented people out there who will somehow succeed but the general public isn't going to have a problem. Be careful on your choice of screen protectors because the S Pen is meant to really nicely move across the glass. And if you get something that's a really tacky screen protector, it just is not going to flow or move well. If you're someone who's not going to intend to use the S Pen, something like a Zag will be just okay for you. Otherwise, go for a nice plastic or a glass type screen protector. Or better yet, no screen protector at all which is what I will do if I can help it. I'm sure a question will be is, does the S Pen scratch the display over time? No, no it won't. I just had that discussion about Mo scale of mineral hardness. This is a nice soft rubber. The rubber is much softer than the display itself, so it's not going to be able to scratch it. So before getting into these awesome pen features, let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? Which is there is no action memo currently installed. You guys remember what action memo was, right? It's where you'd hold down on this button here, double tap, and it would pull up a screen so you could take a note. Then you can link it to an action. That was the number one feature that I loved about the note. And for some reason, Samsung decided to take that away. So I went in the back end, got an old S Note APK, you can download S Note from the Galaxy App Store. Don't get this one. Get an older version, install it, and then you will have Action Memo. Check this out. It works. This is not a perfect fix though because Samsung keeps trying to update it. And once they update it, you lose that functionality. But this is just something that keeps me happy for the meantime because I was really upset that Action Memo was gone. Another thing that's missing, and I don't know if Samsung is going to restore this, is text recognition. I used to be able to write out a mathematical formula and it would recognize it and put it into nice numbers for me. 
or I could draw a circle or something and it would change it into a perfect circle shape. I really relied on that. So watch this. Hi. I would normally use this option to select and it would give me the option to convert it. That is not here. I can use smart select though and select high, but look, to extract text does not work here. That's really odd. When I first got this phone, right out of the box, it worked and it would convert that for me. It looks like it has been updated since and it has stopped working. I can't really explain that. But the dumbfounding thing is when I use action memo, I can say hi, use the same smart select, extract text, and it says hi. I don't know. I don't get it. Samsung, what have you done? So maybe they're planning on reintegrating that once they give us Action Memo again. So instead of S Note, what is it that they have given us this time around? Well, it's called Samsung Notes and it has integrated everything all together. So you have the option for text, pen, brush, image, and voice. You can write some text. Then you can go ahead and make a scribble of some sort. You can make yourself a pretty drawing with smiley faces. You can include an image. Here's me being very pensive, wondering what Samsung has done. Then I can add voice and it's recording. So you can see everything is now compartmentalized. Kind of works as unit by unit. And that's going to be great for the layman. You can title it, you can categorize it. They've also bragged about adding a couple new pen tools. So you've got watercolor brush and also your oil brush. Essentially, these just let you mix. So you can mix colors here. You were not able to do that before. You can create new colors. You should add some depth to your paintings. This screen is still pretty small to me to actually want to paint on, but I did my best at drawing a bird, kind of supposed to be a conure, I guess. Let's call him Dimitri. So Samsung has added some nice types of drawing features, but overall I think that they've oversimplified this. And I think that they've done this because before it was a little bit confusing to know how to use all the different features. So for the layman, that's what this is made for. And as far as Action Memo goes, I feel like they replaced it in favor of the screen off writing. Maybe they thought it was a little bit redundant. You can write on the display and then you can pin it. You can see I've got my memo here. So I'll be able to check out that note when I need to. It will always be on the always on display. That's handy, right? But I still want to be able to take notes while the screen is on. Part of the beauty of Action Memo is to be able to double tap, say something, and then pin it to the home screen. So it's essentially doing what the screen off memo is doing, but just with the screen on. That's not redundant, Samsung. That's just good. Oh, also, as a quick aside, once you write on here, you can keep this visible or you can minimize it. You can double tap it, then you can throw it away. So let's move on to showing the air command features, the set of features that we do have now. Pulling it up, you've got create note, and we did cover that in some detail. We've got smart select. I showed you a little bit of what you can do with smart select. Let's pull something up like this really cute little puppy, smart select. And you can use your lasso tool and you can essentially cut him out. Then once that is cut out, you can choose to draw on that little selection. You can share it. You can save it actually onto the always on display, which is cute. And you can just save it to your gallery. Let's go ahead and share it. So you can share it to Samsung Notes. Let's go ahead and make a new note for ourselves. And you can see that we now have it pasted inside of the text app along with the URL where it came from, and then the crazy amount of other text. I don't know why this was all pasted. Usually it's just the URL. There we go, that worked much better. The only thing that I'm not really liking about being able to paste it into the Samsung Note app is I want to immediately be able to draw on it, right? And I'm not able to. This brings it into its own little compartmentalized section and it's right there. I don't want to do that. I want to draw on the pug right here. Maybe I want to make a little note and scribble it on here. It doesn't look like I'm able to do that. In order to draw on the little pug, I have to select him. Then I can only draw on the selection itself. So I find that to be a bit odd. 
Another thing that you can do with Smart Select is to create an animated GIF or GIF, however the heck you want to pronounce it. This shouldn't be like a religion or something, seriously. Anyway, if I want to create a silly, humiliating GIF of myself, we can go ahead and push play, hit record, you can hit stop, and voila. That's kind of cool. I can even draw on myself if I want to. <laughs> Beautiful. The last thing that you can do with Smart Select is to select text. Be careful when you're doing this because sometimes it'll end up selecting text from the whole page. I just want this one little part here about pugs. They're adorable. You can extract text. And you can see now I have this selection right there. I can go ahead and copy just the part that I want. Give a couple of options. You can copy it, share it. You can even look up a word in the dictionary. You can translate one as well. So all that is pretty handy. The next thing that you have is screen write. So you can write on the screenshot here. Then of course you can erase it, undo it. The other option that you have is called scroll capture. So that's going to capture the whole web page. And that's pretty cool. So you have the whole website there. That works really well for website sharing. Another thing that you can do is to translate. So you can see you can choose from English to Spanish and then you can hover over a word with the pen, only works with the pen, and it tells you the Spanish translation from English. A bit of a bummer is that it only works with one word. I would like to be able to select whole phrases but I can't figure out a way to do that. Actually, I just found a much better feature and I don't even have to use the pen. It's built right in. Hold down like this. You can select all this and then hit translate. Ta-da! From English to Spanish. So, uh, uh, kind of redundant there then, Samsung? Also, I think it would be nice if I could choose, instead of having translation, to have dictionary. If I want to use dictionary, the only thing I could figure out to do, and it's kind of convoluted, is to hold down with Smart Select, extract text, hold down whatever word, and then I can click dictionary. Some, that's, something's weird with that. Somebody, correct me if I'm missing something. Then we've also got a feature that is called Glance, and I don't find this to be the easiest to use. It's something that you need to practice with. So let's go ahead and open up our calculator. I'm calculating something astronomical or whatever. I can use my pen. I can touch on glance and it's going to minimize it for me. So that if I go underneath my banking application and I'm looking at my account or whatever, I can just get my value. If I take the pen away, it's going to minimize it for me. So this is supposed to augment the multitasking abilities it can only be done with the pen, and this app will only pop up when the pen is hovered over it. Otherwise, it's going to pop away. I can move this around if I'd like, but you can see that it's telling me it has to be used with the pen, and you have to interact in the app with the pen, otherwise it's going to minimize it. The idea here is to get you using the pen, keep it in your hand. I think the part that makes this actually useful is that not all applications are available for split screen. So you can see you have YouTube, Chrome, not even Bank of America is available for split screen. So I'm not really able to multitask very well. I'd have to switch between them. And that's been just fine for me. That's what I'm so used to is simply just switching, 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 switching. And split screen has never become really useful to me because it's only so selective with the applications. So you can see that this can actually work quite nicely. Then when you're done with it, just remove. The last one that we have is called Magnify, and this is only going to be useful for a select amount of people. So you see you have some options. You can magnify up to 300% if there's something that's really small that you can't see, or if you're someone who's really farsighted, this will help you if you don't have your glasses handy. Just not all that useful for me. If at any point any of these are not useful for you, go ahead and hit the Settings tab here. You see that you've got Shortcuts, and then in this little column here, you can move them around at will. So I'm never going to use magnify. I really don't use the translate. And I can choose any of my applications here if I'd like to access them quickly. So how about Studio and maybe Twitter? Those are more useful for me. So now anytime I remove the pen, these are accessible. So I find their new pen features to be mostly useful. 
they're very much expanded to the general user base. And I can definitely appreciate that because they're trying to make this a more mainstream phone. But they really didn't add too much functionality here and instead took away Action Memo. Thankfully, they're bringing that back. Otherwise, the pen is very, very useful. I think that the pen is better than ever. It writes better than ever, most certainly. I will correct this if I'm wrong, but I think there's 1,024 degrees of pressure. So you can draw very lightly or you can put more pressure down. It's a very delightful experience. And if I had a choice to be without the pen or have the pen, I would definitely have the pen. There are so many times where I need to sign a document on my phone and that is where the pen comes in handy. This precision is awesome. You still have the ability to sign a PDF. It's automatic built in. So here's a nice tax form. Tax time is coming up really quickly, at least for those who are self-employed. So if anywhere requires me to write on it or to put a signature, you know, whatever, that works. That's great. Save. So this episode is getting long enough and this is where I feel like stopping. I'm probably going to be doing two more episodes. The next one is going to cover all the new features, the improved interface, the iris scanner, power saving modes, so on and so forth. Lots and lots of good stuff still. Lots of features. I want to cover those in depth and do it some justice. I also will talk about performance in that episode as well. So hang tight everybody, let me know how much you are liking this phone so far. If there's anything that I missed, the beauty of having it in episodes is I can go and include it in another episode. So this has been Erica the Technology Nerd Likes to Film Stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. I will be back with you soon with another episode. And goodbye.